WBBM FM, Chicago. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment John Lund as Johnny Dollar. Is this Joe Benson, you call me? Oh, yeah, Lieutenant. I'm from Federal Underwriters. All the way from Hartford? Yeah. They sent me to get a report on the National Savings and Loan holdup. Oh, I see. How's the watchman? Well, he died about a half hour ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Shot three times. Hardly had a chance. Did he ever regain consciousness? Yes. Long enough to give us a make on one of the four guys who heisted the place. Well, that's something. Look, uh, if you want a report, you better come on down and get it firsthand. I'll be there in ten minutes, Lieutenant. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in a transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment... Plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Federal Underwriters Incorporated, 223 Spear Boulevard, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Dameron matter. Expense account item one, $240, plane fare and incidentals, Hartford to San Francisco. I arrived ten hours after the news of the National Savings and Loan holdup reached the office. Lieutenant Benson was waiting for me when I got to the city hall. Yeah, you're just in time, Dollar. My men picked up Bernie Manners a few minutes ago. He's down the hall. Manners? He the one you got an identification on? Yes. Watchman looked at some mugs we pulled from the files and spotted him right away. Said Manners was one of the four men who did the job. Oh, it's quick work. Uh, shall we go on down? Yeah, sure. What about this, Manners? Well, he's a two-time loser. 25 arrests on his card. All the way from narcotics violation to armed robbery. We'll see what he has to say before we check out his mama sheet. How'd they get him? Uh, when the watchman made him while we put out an APB. One of the units spotted him because he was going into a saloon. Uh, this way. Oh. Have any trouble? No. They uh, find anything on him? Two dollars and forty cents. No gun, nothing. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you got a smoke? Oh, yeah, sure. And fresh air. Yeah, here you go. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, what do you think of our weather out here? Oh, pretty nice, pretty nice. We're still having snow. <laughs> I haven't been east in 13 years. Forgotten what it looks like. What you guys are talking about? I didn't have nothing to do with nothing. This matters? Yeah. Sergeant Friedman, Johnny Dollar. Hi. Hi. Hello, Bernie. Hello, Lieutenant. Well, let's have it. Of what? A story on the National Savings and Loan Job. I don't know anything about the National Savings and Loan Job. Four men walked in there about midnight last night, shot the watchman, cracked the safes, and got away with $65,000. Now you know about it? I don't know anything. What are you guys trying to hang on me? Where were you last night, Bernie? When last night? Between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. I was in my room, sleeping. Can you prove you were sleeping last night in your room? Who can prove they were sleeping? In a landlady, somebody like that. I don't know. What do you know? Huh? 
About the national savings, Joe. Nothing. I don't know nothing. Look, Bernie, you can make this thing a whole lot easier. I can? Now, who worked it with you? Who were the other three men in on it? Oh, come on, Bernie. You were always pretty good at talking. I'm not going to tell you anything. I don't have anything to tell you. How are you making a living these days? What? What do you do for a living? Why, well, I've been driving a truck up the last week. Yeah? Where? Coast trucking outfit. Did you quit? I was fired. Why? I got in a beef with the boss. Check that. Yeah. Lieutenant Benson and Sergeant Friedman continued to question the suspect. He refused to admit any part in the burglary of the National Savings and Loan Company or to name any people who were connected with it. An hour went by. He still refused to talk. Two hours. Uh, I'm getting tired. So am I. All of us are tired, Bernie. Now, look, why don't you open your face so we can get some rest? Huh? I've told you I didn't have anything to say. <sighs> Who's this joker? Me? My name's Dollar, Bernie. I'm from the insurance company. What's he doing here? Worrying about you and your friends. <laughs> you don't have to worry about me, Dollar. I'll try not to. I uh, thought maybe you was a lawyer. Do I get to see a lawyer? What do you want to see a lawyer for? But to get out of here, that's why. You aren't getting out of here, Bernie. You know that. Uh... Now, tell us all about it. Come on, Bernie. You know it's all over. We got enough to take you into court right now. Uh, don't give me that. Uh -huh. Don't you believe it? No. Hand me that. Yeah, sure. There you go. Thanks. You know what this is, Bernie? No. It's a notarized statement from the watchman that was killed. His name was Fuller. I talked to him just before he died. You know what this says? It says that you were one of the four men who robbed the National Savings and Loan Company last night. Listen. Me. Please state your full name. Him. Henry Fuller. Me. Where do you live? Him. 235 22nd Avenue. Me. I understand that you are seriously hurt. Is that true? Him. Yes. Me. Do you believe that you are about to die from injuries you have received? Him. Yes. Me. Have you any hope of recovery from the effects of these injuries? Him. No. Listen, I... Shut up, Bernie, and listen. Me. Who caused the injuries from which you are suffering? Him. One of the robbers. Me. Is this a picture of one of the men who caused your injuries? Him. Yes. He was looking at a mugshot of you, Bernie. There were four witnesses in that hospital room when Fuller made this statement. It's a positive identification on you. Well? Can I have a glass of water? Later, maybe. Who were the other men? I don't know what you're talking about. Questioning went on. Another hour passed. Everybody got pretty tired. Manners still admitted nothing. It was the usual method of interrogation. Hammer away. Hammer away. Sooner or later, he'd spill something important. Lieutenant Benson knew his job. Once more, Bernie. Who were the other men? For the 20th time, there were no other men. There were four of you, Bernie. Why didn't we play bridge? Tell us what you did all day yesterday. What? Start with from the time you got up. I try to remember. Yeah, we're all interested. Well, what is this? Go on, Bernie. Tell it. Well, I got up about ten. I fooled around all day, and I got to bed early. Very nice. What do you want me to tell you? What you did all day, who you were with, where you went. Oh, it... And after you tell us that, you can tell us how you worked on the National Savings and Loan Office. I'll tell you nothing, nothing. All right, what's your name? What? What's your name? Bernie Manners, you know my name. Where do you live? I told you. Tell us your address. 2020 Army Street. Who worked with you? Nobody, nobody. Yeah, just a minute. 
convention. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'll do it. Yeah. That was about you, Bernie. What about me, Lieutenant? What about me? Guess what the crime lab found tucked behind one of the cushions in the front seat of your car. Oh. Uh, $20,000, Bernie. You didn't hide it very well. I didn't think you'd be looking. Did you use your car? Yeah. Who were the others? Eddie Page, Jack Ivers. One more. The other guy was called Chick. I didn't know him. Chick one. Just Chick. He figured the whole thing. Uh, who contacted you? Eddie. He put me in on but Chick ran it. Where can we get hold of Chick? I don't know. Now, what about ADP? I don't know. Jack Iowa? No. It won't do you any good to lie now. Bro. I'm not lying. I just don't know where you can get hold of any of them. Now, what'd you do after the job? Well, we all got in my car and beat it. I let them off near the Fairmont. All three of them? Yeah. That way you split the money? No, we did that before we left the loan company. Look, I, I'm, I'm tired. Now, one more thing. Who shot Fuller? This Chick... Are you sure? Well, he was the only one who had a gun. Sure, I'm sure. Why'd they shoot him? I couldn't figure that myself. We're all leaving the place. The watchman was all tied up and it was no trouble. Chick walked over, stuck the gun in his back and let him have it. Bernie Manners gave us a description of the man known only as Chick. It was pretty much the same as the description given by the watchman. A check through the moniker files revealed a possible 23 persons who answered the general description and background of Chick. Manners was shown a picture of each one. Couldn't identify any of them. I went back to my hotel and went to bed. The next morning, I was with Lieutenant Benson. They checked the slugs taken from Fuller's body. Any luck? Yeah, they came from a 45 automatic revolver. Looks like it might be a Colt. Well, that checks with what Manners said. Yeah, but nothing in our files on the gun itself. Manners is in the mug room now. If this chick ever did time in any California prison, we'll have him on file. The hard way, huh? Mm -hmm. Hard case. Man's been killed. What about the other two, Page and Ivers? Ivers was released from San Quentin three months ago. The parole office gave us an address for him on Turk Street. Quinlan Friedman went out there, but the people who run the rooming house say Ivers hasn't been around for two days. I've got the place staked out. What was he in San Quentin for? Grand theft auto. Did four years. That the only time he fell? Mm-hmm. Page has had a little more experience. He's older than Manners or Ivers. He's a two-time loser. Both convictions were for armed robbery. Police in Denver wanted for questioning, too. Any leads on him? No local address. He has a sister who lives in Eureka. Police there are talking to him. Should be getting something pretty soon. Communication's been broadcasting this every 30 minutes all night long. I left Lieutenant Benson so I could talk with the auditors who'd been working with the people at National Savings and Trust. By that time, they determined that $68,000 had been taken in the robbery. I spoke to the claims adjuster who'd flown in from Hartford and the officials of the company. I explained the situation with the police and the recovery of $20,000 of the stolen money. They agreed to suspend their claim, pending the arrest of the other three suspects and the possible recovery of the entire loot. Expense account item two, 10 cents, phone call. I checked with Lieutenant Benson at about four o'clock. Hi. Hi. You're just in time. We got a lead on page. Oh, yeah? 1485 Clare Street. I'll meet you out in front. Right. Expense account item three, $1.35. Cab fare to the address on Clare Street. Hi. Hi. In there? Yeah. You want to be in on this? If it's all right with you. Okay. Friedman's covering the back entrance. Quinlan's in the lobby. Let's go. Hey. Uh, How'd you get it? The Eureka police talked to Paige's sister. Said she'd been writing him here under the name of Ernest Lawyers. Oh. Uh, want to take it over there? Yeah. Who's there? Uh, looking for Mr. Lawyers. You Mr. Lawyers? Yeah. What do you want? Package. Who from? Well, it's, uh... Mrs. William Redding. 
In Eureka, California. I have to sign for it. Okay. Hey, what's the I... You alone, Page? <laughs> Who are you? Police. Get your hat. Come on, let's go. Want to take a look over there, Dollar? Yeah. What is this? Bernie Manor spilled it all. Look out. He's got a gun. Drop that page. No good, mister. Why, you lousy cop. All right. All right. Come on, get up. Put your hands out. All right, let's go, Page. Friends, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying sports and other activities. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime, and the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Sergeants Quinlan and Friedman took the suspect, Eddie Page, downtown. I drove over to the emergency hospital with Lieutenant Benson, where they patched up the cut in his temple where Page had slugged him with his gun. After that, we returned to headquarters. Sergeant Friedman met us outside the interrogation room. How do you feel, Joe? Oh, headache. And what about him? Real quiet so far. Mm, fine. We went over the apartment. Now, you'll be happy about this, Dollar. More money? 15000 stuck in a suitcase. Hey, your insurance company's doing well so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see about Tough Boy. Remember me? I remember both of you. How's your head? I'll get over it. How's your chin? I'd like to get at you again. Kind of like to get at you. That's all he's been saying ever since he landed. You're tied in with Bernie Manners and Jack Ivers on this thing, Page. Am I? Yeah. And that's enough for us. I suppose you're going to send me to prison. I suppose we are. <laughs> Some talk. Who's Chick? Chick? The other guy. I don't know. Where's Ivers? I don't know. Bernie had to stay in here six hours. How long are you going to take, Paige? As long as you like. We've got all the time in the world. So have I. You know, we found your cut of the job in your room. Bernie's already told us about you. You're not going to admit anything, huh? Why should I? Man was killed on that job. As a murder charge to go along with everything else. Do tell. You can make it easy on yourself, Paige. <laughs> Easier for you. Okay. That's the way you want it. Friedman. Yeah. You and Quinlan stay with this bird. Stay with him if it takes all night and all day and all night. I want to see how long he can last. Well, now okay. You're... Come on, Donna. Well, what now? I'm hungry. Expense account item four. Six dollars and thirty-five cents. Drinks and dinner for Lieutenant Benson and myself. After eating, we returned to the interrogation room and the questioning of the suspect, Eddie Page. Although he knew there was enough evidence against him to make a burglary and homicide charge stick, he still refused to admit his part in the burglary or to give us the full name of the man known simply as Chick. About 10 o'clock that night, a man who ran a drugstore on Geary Street telephoned that he thought he might have some information that would help. 
I drove over there with Lieutenant Benson. Foggy. Yeah, sure is. Oh, good evening. Can I help you, please? Uh, we'd like to talk to Mr. Smith. Yeah. Oh, you're the police? Well, I'm Smith. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Benson. This Mr. Dollar. Uh, how do you do? You said you had something that might help, Mr. Smith? Indeed I do, Mr. Dollar. Indeed I do. I read all about the burglary in the papers yesterday, and, well, I have this. Hmm. A bill wrapper from National Savings and Loan. Yes. Now, where'd you get this, Mr. Smith? I found it on the floor. Right here in the store. You know who dropped it? Uh, yes, I think so. Who? Well, a man who was in here earlier. I think he dropped it. What did he look like? Well, he, he was tall. He was kind of husky. Oh, he was about 35 years old, I'd say. He wore kind of a dark hat and a trench coat. You ever seen him in here before? No, just tonight. What did he buy, Mr. Smith? Quite a few things. Well, like what? Well, three bottles of scotch and some mixer and some ice and some cigarettes. Uh-huh, I see. Uh, when did you find the wrapper? Uh, right after he paid me for the things. What size bill did he give you? It was a 50. Do you still have it? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, could we look at it, please? Well, surely. Just this way. Here you are. Thanks. No, huh? Brand new. Uh, did you happen to notice if he left in a car, Mr. Smith? No, he was on foot. When I found the wrapper on the floor and then remembered the newspaper story, I ran outside to take a look to see which direction he went. He walked right across the street. You mean he might possibly live around here? I think so. Like, uh, like right there, you see? He went into the Alden Hotel. How long ago was this? Oh, my, that was not over 15 minutes ago. Hey! What? That's him, just coming out on the street there. Get back. Can you see his face? No, no not yet. Is he one of the men you're looking for? I don't know yet. Sounds like it. Lieutenant. Yeah? Take a look. Jack Ivers. Let's go. Uh, you. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, call downtown. Hey, you. Hold it up just a minute. He's going for the alley. Yeah. He ducked right in there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Careful, Johnny. Okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Throw out the gun, Ivers. You don't have a chance. Down! Yeah. He's gonna try for that fence down there. Yeah, let's go. He can't see us in the shadows. And he made the fence. Yeah, come on. See anything? Oh, too dark. Somewhere in here. Hey. Over there? Yeah. Anything? No. The apartment house. You went in the back door. Yeah. Get down. You okay? Okay. Ivers! This is your last chance! He'll get hurt if we don't stop him. That did it. What's it look like? Oh, he's done for. Well, I better phone in. Jack Ivers, one of the suspects connected with the burglary of the National Savings and Loan Office, died instantly while attempting to escape arrest. While we waited for the coroner's men to arrive, we searched his body and found $12,000 of the stolen money concealed in a money belt around his waist. I accompanied Lieutenant Benson to the Alden Hotel, where we learned from the desk clerk that Ivers had checked in the previous day using the name of David Ward. The clerk said that he shared the room with a man who'd registered as Charles Daly. Daly was still in the room, as far as the clerk knew. We went upstairs. Well, if this is Chick, it's been a good day's work. Yeah. yeah. 210. Yeah. Here we go. Hello? 
Could have sneaked out. Oh. Let's find out. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, I'll be. <laughs> Drunk? As you can get. <laughs> That's the way I like to pick him up. Quiet. The man passed out in the hotel room was identified as Chester Dameron, Toledo, Ohio. A check with authorities there revealed he had a criminal record covering 17 years. His nickname was Chick. Along with Eddie Page and Bernie Manners, he was indicted on charges of burglary and murder. The remainder of the stolen money was found in his hotel room. All told, 99 and 39 one hundredths percent of the loot was recovered. Excepting what Ivor spent for whiskey. Pretty good for federal underwriters. Expense account item five, $63.30. Miscellaneous while in San Francisco. Item six, same as one. My plane fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Total expense account, $551.10. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Bill Johnstone, Clayton Post, Bill Conrad, Peter Leeds, and Howard McNear. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Many of the war orphans of Korea are dying of starvation and exposure. Without your help, they cannot live. We can send them food through CARE, the American Package Sending Relief Agency. One $10 CARE food package will feed four children for a month. Send your contribution to CARE's local office or to CARE New York or CARE Los Angeles. This is the CBS Radio Network.